Hey guys, Chris here, and I'm a Ukrainian Canadian. Today is March 8th, 2024. Now let's get to the news happening in Ukraine, shall we? So this is going to be a very brief map update, and I'm going to go over the news very quickly as well. So let's get to it. First, let's talk about the north, the direction of Kupiansk. And there's some positive news. The Ukrainians managed to regain some ground uh, around the area of Tabaivka, so that is south of Kupiansk. Uh, you can see that they have regained the heights overlooking the village of Tabaevka and Khromalne. And this area was taken by the Russians about a month and a half ago. So it's good to see that the Ukrainians managed uh, to pick up an initiative and drive out the Russians uh, out of you know these heights. So we'll see how that develops in the next few days. But for now, you know it's not significant enough to say that this is obviously breakthrough. But this is good to see that the Ukrainians in certain directions were able to drive the Russians out of certain positions. Furthermore, let's go over Bakhmut. So this is the other sector uh, where you're seeing, unfortunately, more Russian gains. And uh, the north of Bakhmut, as it's been reported in the past, uh, is where it's very difficult for the Ukrainians and the Russians are slowly, slowly gaining some ground uh, around the area of Bogdanivka and Vanivske. Now, what I can say is that today I saw some reports from Ukrainian soldiers on the ground here that are mentioned that they've been able to dislodge Russians out of Ivanivske and also in areas around Bogdanivka. So this is good. Um, and it means that the Ukrainians are able to also push the Russians out of Bakhmut despite the sheer amount of resources and men that Russia moved in this direction. So I'll keep you guys updated, but for sure, you know, the main goal for the Russians is Chasivyar. It's a Ukrainian stronghold. There's a Ukrainian command center here. And uh, this is kind of right now the main point that is resupplying and uh, essentially the command centers as well, given directions for the defense of the outskirts of uh, Bakhmut for the Ukrainian forces. So the Ukrainians absolutely can allow the Russians to creep in and get very close to Chasivyar. Unfortunately as well, we've been seeing that um, the Russians have been utilizing the FAB bombs, so these very destructive bombs, 500, 1,000, even 1,500. This is kind of their um, their destructive power uh, that they can carry. And the 1,500, the FAB 1,500, the most destructive yet. And we've seen them actually being used by the Russian Air Force uh, in the last few days. So this is very, very bad because of how destructive they are. And they can do a lot of damage. So... Um, you know, even though the Russians have had great, great air losses, they've lost a lot of jet fighters in the last few weeks. Um, they continue on pushing because they absolutely need that momentum to continue on. So uh, it's very difficult for the Ukrainians because they don't have the air power or air superiority to knock down these Russian jet fighters. And now let's go in the south of Bakhmut, and that is around the area of Donetsk, and specifically of Divka. So, of course, the Russians took Avdivka a few weeks ago, and through this momentum, they managed to drive uh, and push further and further about four to five kilometers outside of Avdivka. So right now, the line has been stabilized, thankfully, by the Ukrainians. And as I've said in my previous video, the Ukrainians right now are kind of controlling the heights, which is allowing them to control and stabilize the situation um, in relation to, to this Russian offensive, which has achieved for now their offensive culmination. So right now, the fighting is ongoing around the area of Berdichi, Semenivka, Umanske. There is some fighting going on in Tonyenke, but I believe that this village will be taken by the Russians because of how it's not an adv advantageous position for the Ukrainians to hold right now. So essentially, I think that the fighting is going to be around Pervomaiske, essentially this kind of line here, and the heights. Um, and what is good is that there is a lot of natural obstacles which will, um, you know, slow down the Russian advances, hopefully. So right now, that's the situation. And another factor which has been helping the Ukrainians to hold the line here in the outskirts of Avdivka are the Bradleys and, of course, the Abrams tanks. Unfortunately, there's been also some videos that came out uh, and pictures that came out this week of a few of them being knocked out by the Russians. Uh, and I believe three of them were damaged by the Russians. And uh, of course, if we're considering the fact that Ukraine only received 31 Abrams, uh, that is not a lot. 
And of course, for anyone that thought that there were some sort of super weapon that are impossible to destroy or damage, well, that's reality for you. And Ukraine will be losing uh, armored vehicles. That's just part of war. And Ukraine isn't fighting some minuscule army. Russia has many tricks in their bags and they have extremely a lot of weapons. So we need to get used to these types of images and although it hurts, it sucks, it's going to happen. But they are serving their purpose because based on the images that I've seen of these knocked down um, Abrams tanks, and I believe one of them was in Lastochkine, one of them was in Berdichi, uh, they seem to be pretty much intact. Just their tracks are either blown off or one part is damaged, but it seems like the crew made it alive. So the Abrams certainly uh, played its purpose in protecting the crew, which is far more valuable than just the armor itself. You know, you can always repair uh, and replace a tank. You cannot replace a human life. So that's the situation in Avdivka. And of course, in the outskirts of Donetsk, there's also a lot of Russian offensives going on right now in Krasnohorivka, uh, Marinka, and also Novomikhailivka. So these are the kind of three villages where, um, or three directions where the Russians are trying to continue pushing through. And this is all part of a bigger strategy of trying to drive the Ukrainians out of these key villages that are very close to their so-called uh, capital of Donbass. So that is Donetsk city, which is a massive, massive city. And uh, the fact that the Ukrainians are so close to the capital of Donbass is unacceptable for the Russians. So they will do everything possible, as we've seen in Avdivka, to push and drive the Ukrainians out of these positions. So that's the situation right now in Donetsk, in the greater Donetsk area. And the last update I wanted to give you guys in the front line is the Orikhiv direction in Zaporizhia. So right now the Russians are trying to take back Robotene from the Ukrainians. And that's been pretty difficult for them, even though they have moved a lot of troops. And part of it is because the Ukrainians are flying swarms of drones on a daily basis, hitting these Russian units, trying to enter this village of less than 500 people. And uh, actually, we saw I saw a footage today of a HIMAR system destroying a Russian Zhitel jamming system. So the Russians, evidently, because uh, they're getting attacked um, through, you know, various uh, Ukrainian drones on a daily basis, they have to bring these jamming systems, which are very expensive, close to the front line. And so the Ukrainians managed to destroy one of the most expensive ones, which is the Zhitel jamming system that the Russians have built. Uh, so this is very positive. It's an indication yet again that they have problems with Ukrainian drones. And of course, the Ukrainians are masters um, and uh, their operators are some of the best in terms of uh, the FPV drones. So the Russians cannot match that, even though they can build the same quantity of drones, the Ukrainians just are much more masterful, and much more creative with the way that they build them. And their destructive power um, is, is certainly something that can be appreciated by the hundreds of videos that we've seen uh, of these very precise drone attacks over Russian units, armored vehicles. They have really changed um, warfare and also helped the Ukrainians tremendously through the shortage of ammunition in uh, controlling and at least defending uh, the hottest front lines right now. So that's pretty much the update for the front lines. Another update I wanted to, I wanted to give you guys is, of course, we all have heard about uh, by now the Russian Sergei Katov patrol ship that was destroyed by the Ukrainian unmanned sea vessels around the area of Feodosia. So you can notice that the Russians now, if they are utilizing their ships, it's much more further away now from essentially the west side of Crimea, and they're trying to really be careful with how far they can go. And uh, the sheer fact that the Ukrainians now can control the narrative, even uh, by Feodosia and the Kerch Bridge, uh, certainly is a positive trend, and I believe that this is obviously a shaping operation to eventually clear the waters uh, from Russian Navy ships and then have a clear path towards the Kerch Bridge, which absolutely needs to be destroyed this year. And these unmanned sea vessels uh, have such good destructive power that I have no doubt that they could certainly, with a combination of cruise missiles, knock down the Kerch Bridge pretty well if you threw, if you throw about 20 of them at the same time. Uh, speaking of which, um, the Ukrainians released uh, some new footage of a new iteration of Ukrainian unmanned sea vessel, which is called the Vdivka. 
And what is very, very good to see here is that this unmanned sea vessel, according to uh, the SBU, has a range of a thousand kilometers. So this is pretty much, it can pretty much hit anywhere in the Black Sea. So there is no hiding for these Russian uh, military ships anymore, even though, even though they're you know, going all the way up to uh, Georgia and the Caucasus, uh, the Ukrainian unmanned sea vessels can hit them. So this is very positive, and uh, I can only hope that next few weeks, the Ukrainians will be able to knock down the Kerch Bridge, uh, because also there's been reports today indicating that there has been uh, that the ships of the Russian Navy have not been present in the Black Sea since the sinking of that Sergei Katov patrol ship. And it wasn't just a patrol ship. The Sergei Katov uh, was actually one of the newest ships, uh, newest additions to the Black Sea fleet. It actually was completed um, just shortly after their special military operation started, so the invasion. Um, and I think they completed in July of 2022. And what is very important about this ship is that it can also launch caliber cruise missiles, uh, which have unfortunately been very effective uh, at you know terrorizing the Ukrainian population. So this is another ship that's been destroyed that the Russians can no longer utilize to terrorize Ukrainian cities. And last but not least, this is an interesting development, and uh, this is uh, essentially a security alert that's been issued by the U.S. Embassy, and not just the United States, but also several other countries, including Canada, South Korea, Germany, and Sweden, uh, pretty much alerting their populations that they should avoid large gatherings over the next 48 hours. So this was released uh, last night, so it would be interesting to see what is going to happen in the next 36 hours. Right, because obviously some time has already passed since that uh, alert was be has been issued. Now I'm just wondering what is, uh, what is going to happen, if it's going to happen. Is it a Russian false flag attempt before the elections? Uh, is it perhaps a terrorist organization trying to exploit Russia's weakness, internal weakness, uh, to support, let's say, their Muslim communities, whether it be in Dagestan or Chechnya, or it could be very well uh, local partisans or rebels uh, doing some sort of operation in Moscow. So let me know what you guys uh, think about this situation. What, what what do you think the scenario, the most likely scenario uh, would be in this case? It's very likely that I personally think it could be a Russian false flag attempt, especially because we're very near the so-called Russian elections, which obviously we know who the winner is going to be. They're going to be rigged, and it's just a formality that Putin needs to go through. So I believe it's most likely a Russian false flag attempt uh, called by Putin to essentially, you know, uh, again, point the finger at Ukraine that they've committed a terrorist attack and we need to beat them if we want to stop them. So let me know what you guys think. And of course, speaking of Russian elections, which is going to be uh, between March 15th till 17th, another thing I want to say is that the Ukrainians, based on, you know, the activity that we've seen since 2024, uh, drone activity over Russia. So Ukraine has really increased the temperature literally uh, in terms of hitting critical military and economic targets, infrastructure in Russia, whether it be oil terminals, oil refineries, different plants. Um, and Ukraine absolutely needs to increase that almost on a daily, daily ba basis before the election. Like launch as many drones as possible over these key uh, targets. And because Putin will have to answer Right, he's going to be under the spotlight and he won't be able to hide in the bunkers. Right, He needs to be out there giving interviews and being present, even though we know that he's going to win and it's just a formality to legitimize the Tsar. Uh, but it will make him look, first of all, embarrassed and it will delegitimize him because the Russians are going to be asking themselves, some of them, not all of them, but some of them will be asking questions. We thought that the special military operation was going according to plan. What's going on? Why is our metallurgical plant burning why is our you know oil terminals why are our are, are, are oil term terminals you know breaking apart and blowing up right and i think it's really important that ukraine intensifies that because this will put putin on the spotlight it will embarrass him and um let me know what you guys think about that so that's the video for today thank you so much for your support and i will see you guys in the next one slavo ukraini